America has a long history of growing potatoes, first on diversified farms and later in areas that specialized in potatoes. The shift reflected the many advances in production. This progress and knowledge passed down through the generations has enabled potato growers to become better stewards of the land. Each year, the National Potato Council presents its Environmental Stewardship Award to a farmer who best exemplifies these ideals. The 2017 winners are Leon and Lance Hapka, father and son of Helma, Minnesota, who farm with help from Lance's sister, Jennifer. I'm very fortunate, I've been told by many people in, in production agriculture are how lucky I am to have not only one, but have a couple family members follow me in this business. We've been growing here since the 90s. I really got involved um, when I was in high school, I got partially involved just working on the farm. It was a bit of a challenge to, to work here because we're 20 miles away and for me to drive, until I got my driver's license to come up here, uh, it, was, it was a bit difficult. This family farm is in the far northwest corner of Minnesota. It was not the most productive land, some of it highly erodible. There is definitely some effects from the previous uh, growers that, that are the farmers that worked here. One big thing is all the rocks. They removed a lot of rocks, but a lot of those rocks ended up in, in windrows along the edge of the field. Uh, we actually went through and cleaned those windrows, uh, got rid of those rocks. Blown in fence lines and buried irrigation pipe also were removed as the Hapkas improved the farmland. But it requires continued vigilance. Wind erosion is a big aspect on our farm. We take it very seriously. The biggest thing that we do is we try to always have something growing and we always have material on top of the soil to control the soil from blowing. This is an example of the most erosive soil that we have in Kitson County. And this is pretty much what you guys manage, right? Right, right. yeah. Yeah, and, and this is a, this is, it's sad for me to actually see this area, but this is where the trucks have to drive to operate. Well, them. this happens. And now you'll turn around and you'll put rye out here? We actually have rye grow, already seeded. So after, after harvest here, we'll incorporate that in. Potato vines hold soil in place while the rye crop is established. Rye has a suppressive effect on certain weeds, which reduces herbicide use. In the spring, corn will be planted into the rye. After a second crop of corn, potatoes will be planted once more in the rotation. These guys are true stewards of the land. That's the bottom line. They have ground and they, and they hold it high on a pedestal because it's putting food on the table for people and it's putting money in their pockets. The Hapkas grow 700 to 800 acres of potatoes under irrigation. Groundwater is plentiful. We don't have to lift water very far, which makes it very efficient for pumping water. Uh, in a couple cases, we pump water directly out of nearby gravel pits to put on our fields, which is actually a very clean water source filtered through the gravel. Water management is still important, however. All irrigation pivots are precisely controlled, saving both water and energy. So as the pivot is walking around the field, when it goes to an area that's, say, lighter soil that has a different growing characteristic, I might put on more water. And then when it gets to an area that has maybe heavier soil, I'll speed up the pivot as it goes through there, therefore putting on less water. Northern Minnesota has a short growing season, so farmers must make the most of it. An agronomist comes out on a weekly basis to take petiole samples throughout the fields. Only stems are sent in for lab analysis to determine if plants are receiving the right amount of nitrogen, an essential plant nutrient. And it looks like, uh, you know, on a few of these fields we could be adding a little bit more. Right. But then a few of them look pretty good too. The analysis also helps in avoiding too much nitrogen which could leach during a heavy rainfall. Having another set of eyes in the field is useful in scouting for pests or diseases, but the Hapkas pride themselves on being hands-on managers. They are certified pesticide applicators, they spread fertilizer seed, and are in the cab at harvest. From the ground up, you learn how to identify diseases, how to identify pests, and then you think that you know 
enough to where you can rely on somebody else to uh, give you advice. But then again, in the end here, you're, you're still the person that is best off if you can look at that crop and see it and walk the fields to make those choices. If there is one thing they like more than walking their fields, it's flying over them. For Leon, it became a hobby, but he also uses his plane to scout his fields. The Hapkas grow russet potatoes for J.R. Simplot, a major food and agribusiness company. A field representative comes out to the farm on occasion to check on crop progress. Good. Looks good. Okay. Nice size profile, too. Yep. Um, Pretty good set. Good shape, yeah. Harvest time means all hands on deck to bring in the crop before the snow flies. Lance oversees harvest, and Leon handles storage. This leads to good-natured ribbing. One of the first days of One of the first days, they, they, they came back and reported we had a 94% bruise free that day, which yep. was just phenomenal. Yep. And Lance calls me and he says, the hell do you guys do with that? The warehouse to bruise so 6%? Well, why, is, why is there 6% bruised? <laughs> And, and the funny part is that, that that's going to happen in the field. <laughs> bruising will happen in the field, yeah. <laughs> All the potatoes that come out of the fields are produced under Good Agricultural Practices, or GAP, an audit to minimize risk of microbial food safety hazards. Part of that is we take water samples. We take them a, once a month, usually, throughout the summer of all our irrigation water. And I also check for nitrogen in the water samples and also bacteria. All employees are trained in food safety, and all machinery and potato warehouses are kept clean. As needed, these potatoes will go to the Simplot plant in Grand Forks, North Dakota, only 70 miles away. There, they will be processed into french fries for restaurants. Honestly, I grew up by Homa, <laughs> and uh, I, I know what kind of land's up there and what they've done to that farm and how they've built that operation is quite amazing. The family enjoys participating in the community and giving back to it. They donated land to the county for a bike path, seeded native plant species, and planted scores of trees to be enjoyed by all. Four generations of Hapkas found the American dream in growing potatoes and being good stewards of the land. Environmental stewardship really ensures the future of our farm. The Environmental Stewardship Award is a component of the Pesticide Environmental Stewardship Program of the National Potato Council and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Congratulations to the Hapkas of Halma, Minnesota.